The stock market doesn't need a vaccine. It just needs positive news about the possibility of a vaccine. That's what we saw on Monday. Biotech Moderna released an enthusiastic press release about their interim phase one trial. That news got the Dow to shoot up 900 points. Moderna's stock jumped 20% and gave them a perfect opportunity to dump a bunch of new shares on the market. They raised more than $2 billion on one press release. And it turns out once people bothered to read past the headline, it was good news for eight of the 45 people in their very small trial. Still good, but the market came back down on Tuesday. The trial news was a great trial run for investors like us, though. You couldn't ask for a better preview of how to expect a market to react when there is a vaccine. Disney shares up 7%. Uh, Delta Airlines closed 14% higher. United jumped 21%. Carnival shares were up 15%. Netflix, however, down a fraction of a percent. So today on Dumb Money Live, what news are we looking for? What stocks will benefit most? And more importantly, how are we timing our entry points on the next news of a vaccine? This is Dumb Money Live with Chris Camillo, Dave Hansen, and Jordan McLean, streaming live on YouTube. We are Dumb Money. Hey there, Dave here, along with Chris and Jordan. Welcome to the show. Let's all wake up the YouTube algorithm together this morning. Hit the like button. Go ahead, do it. And uh, let's all put a chat in the comment to the, the live chat. Let us know where you're watching from right now. If you have a favorite post-vaccine stock, share that with us in the chat right now too. I do have a handful of stocks that I wanna talk about and I've already made some adjustments to my portfolio. If you uh, follow us on our brand new Dumb Money Discord server, you probably already saw that. And Chris, I know that you um, also have found a new addiction posting on Discord. Well, are you there, Chris? Can you hear me? He looks frozen. Chris doesn't have <laughs> his headphone in or he, his camera froze. No, he's he's actually frozen. <laughs> oh, well. Um, what are we going to... Is Chris calling me right now? This, this, is, this is going well. We've... Uh, We've broken the shot. Oh, there's Chris. Now you're hey, now I, you're back with us. I, I didn't even know I wasn't with you for like a minute. So did you uh like were you off on Discord land? Uh, no, I love I love Discord land though. That's, <laughs> that's my that's my new favorite place. I'm not yeah, actually I, prepared for this episode because I've been spending too much time on Discord. Uh, well, I didn't have anything set up this morning either. That's why we started 10 minutes late. So uh, I do want to start with the news that uh, we're looking for, starting with, I guess, the Oxford trial. Is that is that where you... And we are, by the way, are going to keep this at an hour today because Chris has a graduation parade for your kids driving through the front yard or something this, this morning in about <laughs> an hour. Oh, yes. Yes, we do. Okay, Dave, let, let's... Can we back it up, though? I... Uh... We last week we did our second wave episode, and yep. oh, this week that was this, that was Monday. Last, what day is today? Oh, today's today is Thursday? Thursday. Okay, so that was depressing. Okay, I knew it was depressing. You knew it was depressing. A lot of our followers have been reaching out saying that was depressing, but we had to do it, and it's not because we think a second wave is imminent. By the way. I'm not even sure if a va if positive vaccine news is imminent. But what do we keep talking about? It's having a prepared mind and running scenarios. So yeah. these are two. Would you agree that these are two of the biggest market impacting scenarios that could play out over the next 30 to 120 days? Would we no. do we agree on that? Either Absolutely. second wave or vaccine it's, news. Th those are those are you, you have to be prepared for both sides. And those are the two kind of trigger points that we're looking for to figure out what what moves we're making in our portfolios. Yeah. So so if you get vaccine news at 1130 a.m. on a Wednesday and you're waiting until then to figure out what stocks would and the market's up 800 points, the Dow's up 1200, whatever it is. And you're waiting for that moment to figure out what are the best stocks to be in now. Yeah. You've already lost. You've already lost. You have to have a prepared mind. You have to know exactly what you're going to do the second that information starts to get disseminated or even leaked that there could either be positive news about a vaccine or like Monday's episode, bad news about a second wave bubbling up or a hot spot. Right. That's what this episode is all about. This episode is about the happy side of, the, of those scenarios, which is. 
we're going to get positive vaccine news. Now, you know what's interesting? That Moderna news that we got uh, on Monday morning, we saw what it did to the market. As it turns out, now there's been, a, you know, there's all kinds of scientists out there that are critiquing the study, critiquing the data. And it looks like the data is not as good as we thought it was when the company issued it, right, in a press release on Monday. Yeah. But the market's generally still going up on that data. Um, and Dave, that goes to your point. It's not about the ultimate, it's not ultimately about having a vaccine that works beautifully. It's more about the hype and the initial news of more pot of light. Everyone wants what one thing. We want light at the end of the tunnel. And if anybody gives this market a ray of light at the end of the tunnel, whether it's a press release by the Oxford study, and we'll talk about that today, or whether it's something out of China, one of the vaccines they're working on, it doesn't matter. These are all news events that will, in my opinion, absolutely propel the market higher. And depending on how good the news is, potentially propel the market so quickly and so high that it could ultimately, we could ultimately look back at that event as being the last big opportunity to make a really monster trade. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's it's almost like any kind of news could be misinterpreted early and cause something to happen in the stock market, like we saw on Monday. And then once you read a little deeper or more people have put eyes on it and we see what happened on Tuesday with the stocks going back down. So I think that we, we not only have to be prepared for the, the real thing, but also what if we have additional false starts in this whole thing? Yeah, and I, listen, I said something in the Discord channel. I, I put my trades, they're my just initial trade set on the vaccine trade, and it's not how deep I'll ultimately be, but I put those trades in Discord this morning, uh, and I said something that I really mean. It's don't critique our vaccine trades because it really doesn't even matter. For the most part, it's not about picking the perfect vaccine stocks. And when we say vaccine stocks, we're not talking about investing in vaccine companies. We're talking about investing in companies that will likely do the best if news is announced that we could have a pause, you know, vaccine progress. Right. Um, we'll talk about our stock picks. The stock picks aren't that important this time. When you agree, it's less about what stocks. It's more about the timing and trying to gain some little bit of an information edge as to when this first news is going to get leaked, because that that's that is a lot more important to me. Yeah. Um, what are your vaccine trades? I mean, we talked about we're they're probably the same as mine. We we've been talking the last few days. I mean, what do you, what do you guys like? Let's just talk well, about a good starting point. Okay. Yeah. So I think kind of the starting point for me is people have been cooped up. There's a demand for entertainment, and I'm not looking at the movie theater companies. I still think Netflix, Roku, Apple TV, uh, for, for the long term, that's how people are going to consume that. I'm not looking at restaurant stocks because you and I both already have too much exposure to restaurants, right? Because that's kind of uh, our, <laughs> our side hustle. Um, so I'm looking at concerts. I think people want to go to concerts and want to get out and, and be entertained. So Live Nation is, is going to be on fire. That's a, that's a stock that I bought on Tuesday. Um, I think casinos. I, I was in Wynn Resorts. I've been long since they were at $60 a share. They're, at, um, 80, 80, 90 ish now. Uh, I think they'll go back to 150, 200. Um, what else? I think uh, people will want to get out. They're going to want to mingle. They're, they're wary of going to crowded bars, though. So Match.com is another one that I picked up on Tuesday. Uh, Cruiser's going to cruise. I got those uh, Royal Caribbean January 2021 calls. Uh, I think that you're also in Royal Caribbean and, and also uh, picked up some Carnival to diversify. I think I'm looking at Norwegian as a, as a possible way to just get a little bit more exposure there. Um, we have stores opening. I think that uh, a company that I would want to be in anyway because I buy all of their products. Apple, uh, Chris, you have the magic keyboard for this. Mine arrives today, and you say it's a game changer, life changing. So <laughs> Apple is is kind of it. That's the stock I want to be in anyway, and I can make an argument that it it falls into this uh, this post vaccine world. Um, I mean, Tesla is. If people are going to be out buying cars. You, you're you in Ford for the uh, post-vaccine and stimulus play. I like Tesla. Uh, I'm keeping my stay-home stocks like uh, Amazon. I'd love to pick up Zoom. If it drops on vaccine news, I'd love to get into some Zoom because I think long-term that's 
that's a company that's going to do well. Yeah, How about you, by Jordan? The way, that, or that's Chris? a good point, Dave. There are stocks that I am prepared to hedge. I'm not going to sell my positions, but I'm going to hedge them on that vaccine news. It could be, you know, the Pelotons, the Zooms, Teladoc, right? So, Jordan, I know you have feelings on one of the stocks that Dave just talked about, and, and I agree with Dave. I, I love Live Nation as a vaccine trade, and the reason why I love it, one, they have a monopoly on the global entertainment industry, right? They, they literally, they own it, and, or it's a duopoly. I think there's one other company that they compete with there, but Live Nation, when we're done with this, right, when this is over, you're going to see more concerts than you've ever seen in your life. There will be concerts on Tuesday nights and Thursday nights and Wednesday nights that ordinarily they would have not done on weeknights, right? Yeah. And those ticket prices, I think, are going to be appreciably um, more expensive than they were in the past. Uh, I think Live Nation is going – it's just a matter of time, of course, but at certain, when this is over – Live Nation, they're, they're going to kill it. And I think the market's going to react to that well in advance of this thing being over. Uh, any light at the end of the tunnel, Live Nation is one of those names I think the hedge funds are going to want to pour into. So that's definitely on my list. Jordan, you're a little bit less excited about well, that. Well, the thing is, I don't necessarily disagree. I just feel like, um, you know, when it was at $47 or $47.5, it was a little, uh, a little expensive for me. But it's starting to pull back. It's down 6% this morning. Um, and so maybe this is a good time to buy into it. My problem with them is that they just have a ton of debt. They're obviously doing zero business right now. Um, and we don't really know that time frame until, you know, they actually start getting dollars in the door. Cause even if we get, even if we get the vaccine, what, how long does it take to vaccine everybody? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we're, we're talking months, six months before, you know, anybody's going to feel comfortable going back. So they could be, you know, a year to 18 months before anybody starts going to see concerts again. No, I agree. Um, I don't I don't think that the, the concerts are going to happen immediately. I think that, you know, producing that much vaccine is going to take forever. Figuring out who's right. going to be willing to take a vaccine that just barely got approval in this rushed uh, system they're under and who's going to say, nope, I'm... I'm uh, anti-vaxxing on this vaccine that everyone's looking forward to. Um, you know, you those know people are going to exist. People. There's going to be this this other crazy debate. So, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Live Nation is not a quick turnaround play, but Live Nation is a company that I think I want to be in for the long haul because I think tickets, I think people are going to want to get out. The same people yeah. who are anti-vaxxing are probably the first ones to buy tickets <laughs> and get in a big group together. Um, and the ticket price is going to be higher than ever, and Live Nation is a monopoly. I agree. I've, got, I've got them in my top picks, and look, I mean, the, you know, I'm going to buy. I just don't know exactly when I'm going to buy them. Dave, um, don't you think that half our neighborhood, if they had a concert tomorrow, they would be there? Well, I know that, that half of your block showed up when you had a concert in your front yard with social distancing uh, protocol perfectly happening on your side of the street. But what, what was going on on the other side of the street? There was there was it a was congregation. It was a full-fledged mosh pit. It was crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, people want to go to concerts. We've seen it firsthand. And that's that's my that's one of my plays. And I yeah, didn't so go in heavy in Live Nation. It's not it's not like a huge thing, but on a on a on vaccine news, that might be one that I, you know, get some options just for that little pop. It's I would expect it has every time. I mean, we saw it happen on Monday. We I basically went to the most active list and the most uh, gainer list and just screenshotted everything that was up that day, everything that was down that day, and I'm using that kind of as my blueprint for what's going to happen the next time there's vaccine news. That Dave, that, that's a really good strategy. And by, and by the way, I have a blend of uh, rebound companies in the travel space, the hospitality space, and entertainment space that either have good balance sheets, but I also added some that have bad balance sheets because those are the ones that will rebound the most if we, if we can get through this. So I do want to say this trade is not reliant. You don't have to get in this trade and stick with it for the next nine months. Yeah. For me, this trade is more about playing the dissemination of information. Um, I will likely exit a big chunk of this trade within a day or two of this information, hopefully hitting about positive vaccine news whenever that happens. 
Um, because then you have all the people that are going to come in and critique it and be like, well, it's going to take longer than we thought. And I think this company is not going to have the balance sheet to survive and all that stuff's going to start happening. Right. So for me, it's actually a short ish term play. I may keep, I might keep a few of those companies for the long term, but I added where you, you know, you had some travel names. I added Southwest. I think Southwest is the airline that I'm going with. I actually think Southwest might, you know, they might have an okay-ish summer, not a good one, an okay-ish one, because so many people in the South and in the West, now we know they fly more than the South and West, but so many people where they're really dense in the South and West of Southwest, where they're Mm -hmm. big, are like traveling right now. And they're all the people I'm talking to are they're planning summer vacations. They might not be going to Disney World, but they're going to a house in the mountains or to a beach house and stuff like that. So well Southwest think, released some numbers and they're I mean they're they're at like twenty to thirty percent occupancy on their flights now. And they um, did and they say don't have the, they don't have the debt problems that you know some of the major airlines have. Well I mean they're not I mean yeah you're right. They're better than some of the other majors, but they're still an at risk play if, if yeah. we don't get this positive news, right? If we get a second wave, they're in big mm-hmm. trouble. But I also added like a booking.com has a great balance sheet. And booking.com also owns uh, I think they own Home Away, which is VRBO, uh, which I think is actually going to have a reasonable summer as well. And people are booking private homes, right? Like I'm, do- I'm doing that this summer. Uh, you might do it, Jordan. So, yeah, we're looking uh, to go into Austin. So, but but another one that I added to the list, and I, I put my whole list on Discord. Uh, you know, I also obviously I got some Marriott as well, right? I just, these are just uh, these are obvious names. Yeah. I do have my Royal Caribbean. I did add some Carnival, but like there's. N- there's nothing special about that. I actually am really intrigued, though, about my uh, Saber uh, trade. And I think, Jordan, you I read the Saber transcript, earnings transcript last night at like 3.30 in the morning. Uh, it was the last thing I did. It put me to sleep. Uh, but I am kind of intrigued. Saber, for those of y'all that don't know, they are the booking engine, like behind the booking engines. And there's a few different companies that do what Saber does, but they're, they're kind of the largest. And they're getting, they got hit so hard. They got hit from the mid 20s down to three. And now they're back to like six, six and a half. But they claim to be, they can figure it out and stay alive for 18 months. Jordan, you were saying, right? That the, I, you read that in the, in the report? I don't we lost, hear you. We Jordan. lost your sound, Jordan. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they've, they've, they've got some uh, debt that they, um, that they procured whenever uh, this whole thing happened. They also furloughed some employees to, stay more lean um, and they're looking to reduce um, some of the cost of their um, technology operations too. So yeah, they, I want to say that on the on that call, they said they've got 18 months of a zero booking environment and we know we're not at zero booking. We've got some bookings happen right now. Um, obviously international is next to zero. Um, but, but also you know, Jordan, what they're doing is interesting because Sabre is like kind of through this, I don't want to call it a restructure and they have spent a massive amount of money and resources the last couple of years to rebuild their infrastructure to one allow them to operate more efficiently on the cloud but two they're actually adding new products to allow them to get more business which could be seen as a terrible thing because they're not getting any business right now but when they come out of this if if we come out of this saber could be nicely aligned to not just get their old market share back but potentially pick up market share of some of the weaker players that might not be able to survive to next spring, right? So I, I think it's a, they do have one competitor that actually has a better balance sheet than them that's publicly traded. Uh, but I think Sabre's an interesting play. It's maybe not traded as heavily as some of the other travel names. Um, by the way, I did increase my position in Win Casinos as well. Um, and the one stock I do want to talk about right now. But before you do, I, I want to tell you why I don't like Sabre and why I'm staying away from Southwest oh, yeah. and Delta and United and American. Those are companies that I would not want to be in anyway. Like if, if you look at the best of times for Sabre, here's here's their five year chart. They're not a company that is like, uh, yeah, get them back up to where they were in, in the best of times. And they're still like this, like eh, not exciting, downtrending. Do you think they're going to pop to the point where it's exciting to I don't I just don't see a quick pop in Saber and I don't see them as a company that I would want to be in anyway. And I think oh, the I same totally is true. Disagree. Of, I think you're going to see a huge pop if we get back. You'll see they you, only because I agree. It's not the most exciting company, but God, they, they were in the mid 20s. They were in the mid 20s. I mean, like 
you, you could you will definitely see Saber. I would imagine. I'd be shocked to not see Saber pop into the teens, mid-teens, um, at some point once we have some good confidence that a vaccine is coming in end of year, early spring. If that happens, if if it happens, I, I feel this stock is like one of the most beaten down in the whole sector. Right, um, this thing can double and triple, which that excites me. And also they'll return their dividend at some point um, when the revenue gets back. Eh, I'm not excited. It's <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll get back to 12 and yes, you'll have doubled your your return, but are you, unless you're doing options or something, is that really, you're not, you're not leveraged enough in Sabre to make it worth your while? I'm, I'm staying away from that one. Prove me wrong. Uh, Watch it go to 50 or something and I'll just be like, oh, yep, you're uh, right, Chris. I don't see that happening. I'll be out of it long before then. How about, how about Southwest? Why don't you like Southwest, Dave? Same reason. Look at, look at Southwest. Love, hang on. It is not I mean, a, it is not a company that does well long term. It's like, meh. It's like neutral. It's like eh, up and this down. This is not it's, a company you're going to be in long term. You're just going to get in them for the pop. Back. If if there's a pop, I see it more as like a gradual, like uphill battle. Like they're just clawing their way yeah. back to the. It's it's just not. I don't see it being a big move, a fast move. I see it being a painfully slow, gradual, you know, gain back to forty. Okay. Well, listen. I think it's I it's going to be painful. I think what we do agree on for the most part is that we can debate whether Southwest is a better pick than Live Nation, is a better pick than Marriott, is a better pick than Carnival Cruise or Booking.com, right, or Wynn Casinos. But it really, at the, the grand scheme of things, guys, I'm not obsessing too much over my picks here, okay? Yeah. I, listen, I spent some time on the picks. I care less about the picks and more about trying to time this thing because if I time it wrong, no matter what I pick, I'm not going to do well. If I time it right... If you time it right, you could literally just buy a, the the NASDAQ or the Dow. We saw the Dow shoot up, you know, 900 points on Monday. Uh, you, you could. You could. You could lever up in those things. But I do think these travel names, like you said, Dave, they're, they're going to pop more than the other stuff. But you, can I yes. just talk about a company that I'm not in? And it's one... It's kind of like the new Tesla that I feel like i got to get in there at some point. And if I don't get in... If I don't get in, I feel I'm going to regret it like a year or two or three years from now. It's always going to – I feel like Jordan – you know how Jordan feels about all this stuff? I feel like Jordan feels about this stock where I'm just waiting. I'm waiting and I keep missing and I should have just hit the button <laughs> on it a long time ago. Uh -huh. So Penn National, David Portnoy, Bar School Sports, like he he is making – I think he's going to make this company because of his brand affiliation. Yes. I think – and the, the degree that he's developing followers right now, this is going to be the stock that all the Gen Zers and younger millennials, it's like they're – it might not be the first stock they invest in because that will be Tesla. It might not even be the second or third, but it might be the fourth or fifth, right? And, and I feel like it's the stock that's likely to be valued way higher than it should – over the next three or four years. And I'm going to be really upset if I'm not in it, but I can't figure out when to get in it. I, I, <laughs> I, I, Man, maybe I just trouble. get it. It was down to $5, and then it hung out around the $8 mark and then just has been exploding. Um, huge mistake on my part. A, a huge mistake oh, not getting in that thing. And now it's like, come on. Am I gonna, how am I going to get this thing at 27 right now? It's basically all the way half dollars. I don't, I don't think so. And by the way, that when it popped up to 36, 37, right before this whole thing started, that was just based on the whole bar st school sports partnership and all that stuff, yeah. which is kind of like that part of the fluff and like the, the energy of all these investors getting in. But I feel like it can definitely go back up there, no doubt about it. But to be investing in that now here with all the uncertainty just kind of makes me sick to my stomach and I want a better price. But should I, we just buy it? I mean, in the last five days, it went from 16 to 27. That's the five-day chart way, we're looking seen, at. Have you seen, <laughs> uh, thanks, Tan, Tan Johnson, have you seen the Call Her Daddy drama, like the, the, this show on Barstool? It's like the number one podcast or something in the world right now. And like these two girls that do the show, like I've never even watched it. It looks so stupid. Maybe it's awesome. It's got to be awesome to be the top podcast. But <laughs> one of them got into like a feud with the other. I think she got fired and... And, and, and by the way, um, like the whole culture there, it's like become the new TMZ. 
it's wild. And like, yeah. how do you not want you kind of blend that with gambling with the stock market? It just has all the elements of something that's going to get hyped so big. How could we not be part of that? We got to be right. We we do. Uh, and and speaking of podcast, we should probably talk about this in another episode. That Joe Rogan news uh, and how it affected Spotify's stock. That that is like there's things going on in pop culture right now that that we how, how did we there's no way you could have predicted that joe rogan was going to like add a billion dollars of market cap to spotify overnight but there's just there's just things out there that that do move markets and that's what our philosophy is all about that's that's what we're here for yes right so it's it, it doesn't matter whether it's it's sane or not or whether you know you think it, 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 it should happen. It doesn't really matter if it's going to happen. That's all that matters. So we have to figure out what are those marginal drivers of price for each stock, for each sector, for the stock market at large. Right. Yeah. And whatever that marginal driver of price is, we need to identify that in advance and then attempt to detect that change yeah. that is going to happen to drive it and, and, and try to monetize it. Right. I don't care whether it's right or wrong. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, I agree. You, this is this has become a social market, and we're social ARB investors. It's a great time to be a social ARB investor, and that that's why I'm so happy we have the Discord group because now it's not just me, you, and Jordan, Dave, just trying to like do this 24 hours a day, and like I can't keep up with all the opportunity. There's too much. There's too many things, right? At least now it gives us a place where the community. The dumb money community can come together. We can surface opportunities. We can vet opportunities together. And, and just just for a second, I am blown away with how quickly people have have joined up. This we, we had like uh, 400 people, I think, within 12 hours of turning the thing on, and and it's it's unbelievable the the level, the quality of conversation that's going on, the questions, the the, the research, the people posting their their own research on G trends charts and just all all the sources. We we're already just kind of figuring out the best way to organize it. So we have a, a section for people to talk about their trade ideas and research. We have um, some amazing moderators in there who have, are creating all kinds of new channels in this everything else category from crypto to options trading to uh, COVID second wave trades, that, that thing. And then just yesterday, they added a new section called tickers, which if you're, if every everything that we talk about on the channel, they're creating a little sub channel about those for people to have conversations about individual stocks. It's it's remarkable. If you guys haven't joined, let me share with you the, uh, the invite link. Actually, I will tweet out the invite link at Dave Hansen. So just uh, follow on Twitter. And uh, I will I will get an invite link out to anyone watching this video. So subscribe it, it, today. It is the quality of research that's happening in that Discord group is so impressive. So I don't you remember when we had ticker tags? We had Daria, Ian, Ray, Laura, and we had this just very small team who was responsible for surfacing and vetting social ARB trades and insights for some and of would, the And largest... you would some days just have an idea and then you had this like perfect little research team to go figure it out, to go use data, to go, to go find things. But it was so small, it was four people, Daria, you know, like Ian, Jacob, and Laura, that was it. And they did such a good job, but we were doing all the social research for some of the largest hedge funds in the world and for the largest sell side banks in the world like they were relying exclusively on our little team of four and now i feel like overnight uh we have a team that's exponentially larger than that and by the way it benefits everyone in the group and it's so oh, absolutely well, so i'm gonna tell you guys part of the reason why i was up uh, so late last night i had to prepare for an interview this morning uh, i had an interview with a really big journalist for a big global financial news network and they are doing a story. Are you not allowed on, to say what it is? I can't, I'm not gonna say what it is because I don't wanna jinx it, it might or might, I don't wanna like give away the fact that they're doing the story, right? So like, yeah. but, but they're doing a story on, um, on retail traders and during this whole thing, like this whole, you know, last 90 day period and how we're doing. And, and hopefully it looks like they might feature me and even dumb money and they want to get they want to look at our discord channel so i'm actually sending them an invite to the discord channel and they're going to check it out to see 
the, the evolution of investing for like millennial and Gen Z investors. Like, and I was trying to explain to them, like, this is it. It's shared knowledge. This is the future. Um, and they were really intrigued by that. So just for anyone that's on Discord, they're going to be peeking in there probably tomorrow or the next day. And, you know, if we're fortunate enough to be called out in the article, it'll be next week. And we'll definitely tweet it out to you guys. And we'll talk about it on the show. Um, but I, I thought that was really cool. And hopefully this will be a big part of that article. And our, and our followers will, you know, in their own way, be, be part of this movement now. Absolutely. Okay. So we, we're down to the last 20 minutes because I know that you have a hard stop today. So where do we want to go from here? Okay. So, all right. So we have a, everyone's going to have their basket of, of, of vaccines, you know, we call it vaccine rebound stocks, right? Um, so the big question is, what are we looking for? When is it likely to happen? Right. And so all of my research has led me to believe that the next big news coming out on the vaccine front is from the Oxford study. So Oxford partnered with AstraZeneca and they're working on a vaccine that's a different type of vaccine than what we saw from Moderna this week. Different, obviously, from the antibody treatment that came out with Sorrento last week. Um, and there's like three or four different buckets of vaccine types and they each work a little bit differently. Now, I've already seen um, some scientists kind of critiquing the Oxford study saying that, you know what, they looked at the res they looked at the preliminary, like the preliminary stuff that they're seeing in, in just uh, monkeys. Right. And they're saying that it, the data is not even that great, like it technically works, but the vaccine doesn't work that well. And based on what they're seeing now, even in a best case scenario, it would be like, you know, when the flu vaccine comes out and it kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. It would be like one of yeah. those types of vaccines. Right. Mm -hmm. But the, the good thing about the Oxford vaccine is that it's a huge, massive human trial. It's the very first of these massive human trials because they start on this so long ago. It's basically they're taking a vaccine that worked for something else and they're kind of spinning it into a covid vaccine. So um, this news uh they, they're they're in human trials they injected 1100 people and i think they're going to inject up to an additional 5,000 people over the next two or three weeks with the vaccine and the news that's going to come out they're saying by the end of june but everything i can see it looks like this news is actually going to come out in early to mid-june is the degree to which antibodies were created in the bodies of these people that were taking the vaccine and that usually takes like like I think 10 to 18 days to create those antibodies. So the first news almost can't be bad. Does this make sense? It can't be bad really. Like it would only be bad if they were like, hey, no antibodies. People are looking for good news and any level of like people want to see that good headline. And if there's if there's something, you know, factual that's not amazing, they're still looking and wanting for the news to be positive. And any level of success is is going to be hugely kind of, I think, over exaggerated. Yeah. And when it comes to this first this phase two, phase one, phase two results, the first news they're releasing is simply going to be, hey, we got an antibody response, which is awesome. Right. Yeah. And now we know that that's not that meaningful. But I think kind of like the Moderna news, I think it's going to create like excitement. Right. So I think the risk reward here is pretty good that we're going to get a what's going to be at least initially presented to the world as good news now will it be critiqued will it, you know over the next the following days after probably so but my trade is that we're going to get that news and it's going to happen sometime in the next three weeks that's what i think um they're saying end of june but i you know there's so much pressure right now for these vaccine trials to announce good news so they can continue getting funding from the various governments that are handing out money. So yeah. Moderna announces their news and they're like, hey, look what we got. Let's go try to grab some of this government money around the world to like pre-do manufacturing all this stuff. And how we much, how much AstraZeneca Oscar also like, got a bunch of money from the government or multiple governments. Do you, do you remember how much that was? What I don't remember. I think it was like hundreds of millions, but yeah. It's like, you know, the people at Oxford are like, hey, we want our we have a bigger trial. Our trial 
is way bigger. We have more people in it. We should be coming out with positive news. Their news was junky news. Our news is kind of junky too, but you know what? It worked for them. Let's let's publish our jumpy, junky news and hype it up. I think, listen, I'm just, I know uh, uh, maybe this is a reach and that that's the way they're thinking, but I truly believe that's the way all these biotechs are thinking right now and all, all these vaccine studies are thinking. So, well, no, I mean, I, th I, I think believe... they think that they're making something good. Like, I, I think, but they also have to balance the business at the same time, right? Yeah. So they need that money coming in. These are very expensive, you know, drugs to manufacture and the studies to produce. So, yeah, I mean, they, they need those dollar bills to keep it going. And I know so I saw this news somewhere. This news was actually, uh, I saw it in our Discord channel. Bloomberg reported that AstraZeneca got a billion dollars from the U.S. to make the Oxford vaccine. It was that, that was a while ago, right? Um. Yeah. Uh, yes. And th that was their uh, supply, you know, agreements for 400 million doses. Let me check the date on this article. Um, yeah. So, uh, by the way, that's, the, that's what I like about this trial as well, is that this trial is coming from a monstrously big vaccine company, right? That has massive distribution and massive manufacturing. And I think the new positive spin on this story is going to be, hey, if this one's working, this is the big one that they could get. They've already said that they could have millions of doses prepared and ready to theoretically give to the public in late September. Now, that's a stretch. I, I've seen a lot of debate around that. I think theoretically, it's probably October at the absolute earliest. But this is a, this is if it did work, this could absolutely we they could be looking at millions to tens of millions by the end of the year and hundreds of millions by early next year with the way they're ramping up produ uh, production. So I'm not saying this is the end all vaccine at all. There's a whole bunch of other companies, as we know, working on, you got Johnson & Johnson, you got Pfizer, you got all, all these guys are working on, and, and they all think they maybe have a slightly better version. And you know, the ones that are a little bit delayed are probably gonna be even a little better because they're able to learn from yeah. these earlier trials and make adjustments to where what's interesting is the ones that are doing the trials now, AstraZeneca, they'll have to make a decision the, the the this data is like okay we can probably manufacture a vaccine and make a bunch and, and maybe save lives and stuff or we can delay it 60 to 90 days and like tweak it a little bit and make it better and those are really important decisions they're gonna have to make but i'm not worried about all that all i'm thinking about is the initial the initial kind of dissemination of positive rumors or news on this very specific trial going on in conjunction between Oxford and AstraZeneca and when it's gonna happen. Now the risk factor is, I say, I think it's gonna happen the next two to three weeks, but that's a long time in this market, right? I mean, that's a lot of time for Trump to get into like an economic war with China or more bad news coming out in terms of, you know, the economy is maybe getting impacted worse than we thought it was. Or, you know, maybe there's new hotspots popping up in terms of like threat of a second wave or Brazil. Is it Brazil that's doing really bad right now? Is it, like, like the whole Southern hemisphere is way worse than the Northern hemisphere now. And that's yeah. that's an interesting stat that we we were expecting the warmer climates to do better, right? But it's so, it's has, has more to do with their ability to, I guess, uh, do distancing and, and just be their their economy size as well the, these although, are really although new zealand risk. by the way new zealand has basically wiped it out completely they had like their 1400 cases and now it doesn't exist anymore that's awesome it's the benefit okay. of being an island yes but this is a high risk trade right because ultimately and by the way this is a good time to say we're not financial advisors we're not providing any type of recommendations for you. This is what we're doing. We want you to learn how we think, how we strategize. And this is for, you know, a little bit for entertainment and a little bit for education, but you have to make your own decisions. Um, this, please don't try to mirror our trades. We share our trades just so you can learn from us. Now, also, by the way, give us a thumbs up. All right. Cause we've been working so hard on, on, on this stuff, especially this last week, give the channel a thumbs up. The YouTube algorithm really loves that. Uh, you know, it is a risky trade, but you know how I think about this? I feel like, let's just say, I feel that there's a 50% chance or more. I honestly believe if you ask me 70% chance that we are going to receive positive news on the Oxford study in the next 
three to three and a half weeks. Okay. So now that I believe that, I believe that with levered positions in some of these beaten down travel and entertainment names, I think that th at least through the options that I'm that I'm trading there, in some cases I could generate a two or three x uh, my investment. So if I think I have a 70% chance of generating a two or three x, or even maybe a four x uh, as we get a little closer, or five x on some of these positions, to me I like the risk reward in that trade. It's a it's a good trade for me, yeah. but it doesn't mean I'm not going to lose a ton of money if it doesn't happen, right? It's just it's it's a measured risk, this trade. But I like it because, by the way, there's so much upside if the results come back even better than anticipated. Uh, so, and by the way, I don't think this is a one trade. I don't think this is a single trade. There's a whole series of vaccine news dissemination events that are going to happen over the next, call it 60 to 90 days, right? All these companies, and they're all in a race to kind of say, hey, we're doing a good job, too. We're doing a good job, too. Fund us. Keep your money rolling to us, right? And so I think there's a lot of work to be done as an investor, kind of building a matrix, an information dissemination matrix of the top seven or eight vaccine trials and when they're most likely to disseminate information to the market. No, and absolutely. then trying to maybe trade around each of those events, knowing that they're going to come, they're all, they're all going to put a positive spin on what they do. Now, you know, we'll probably get one or two failures, but they're all going to put a positive yeah. spin. At the end of the day, don't you think we have eight trials that are going great, but maybe lucky to get one or two that are actually really great? No, absolutely. Out of the hundred or so that are that are going on around the world, I think that you, we can narrow our focus down to, the, you know, maybe the top 10 or eight, like you say, and... Those are the ones we'll watch and we'll be looking for any news. And I think that probably people will, the, the people writing the press releases might take a little step back after seeing what happened with Moderna, maybe not be quite as, uh, as excited in their language. Uh, although if you, if you actually read what they said, they were, they were pretty clear on, you know, this is, th th they said it was eight people out of 45. It was just the headline that, that made the news and made the, the market go up. And we also had, uh, the, the, chairman of the fed on 60 minutes on sunday night too so monday was monday was an exciting day for the stock market what what is happening today in the stock market though we, we've we've just fallen apart uh, we had some jobless claims come out today um two point something million um yeah I but that was there's that was kind of expected. Economic. It may be uh, we're going into a, a holiday weekend, too. So this is kind of maybe just some selling off there. But it looks like yeah. what the, the everything's down like one or two percent in the, yeah. uh, the major averages. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the market was up. Right? Listen, I, I quickly checked before the show. I, I don't know what drove the reversal. But at this point, I mean, the market's so hyped right now. It doesn't take much to send it up or down a few percentage points. And by the way, I want to just note that. I don't think the vaccine companies are the big trade here. I mean, I know someone's like, oh, AstraZeneca is going to produce this vaccine at cost. How do they make money? Yeah. Listen, I, I'm not saying Ast AstraZeneca is a trade. Uh, we're not trading the pharma companies. We're trading the market. Uh, we're, well, and we're, and we're trading the potential economic fallout from a vaccine being in place, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's that's really that's that's the trade. OK. Um it Let's looks see, like uh, the, in in the chat. It looks like uh, that the uh, house. Uh, where the, the chat's going too fast for me. I just saw it on the screen. But hey, can I can I throw a, a totally random comment related to our last episode? Uh, I did. I put this on Discord this morning as well. I did a bunch of research yesterday. I kind of went down a rabbit hole with uh, Vista Outdoors. It used to be Smith and Wesson. They got rid of the gun division. They're still a huge. In, uh, gun accessories and hunting and ammunition. They're like one of the world's biggest ammunition providers. But they also do a ton of outdoor products, including they're one of like the biggest manufacturers of bicycle helmets, like Bell Bicycle and Gyro Bell Bicycle Helmets and uh, all these different outdoor cookware things. And they're just a big outdoors company. I read that earnings transcript that just came out a couple weeks ago, and I came to the conclusion, and this is why I always say you got to read the earnings transcripts. you got to read them. And even better is when you could listen to them because you could detect yeah. tone and voice. I came to the conclusion that I think that Vista Outdoor CEO is totally sandbagging the summer quarter. I think he's sandbagging it. 
And I think they're going to have such a strong quarter between ammunition sales that it sounds like they literally can't manufacture enough to, to settle this demand, supply the demand. And two, all the outdoor products, Jordan, as you know, bicycle helmets, you can't keep them in stock right now. It's insane. So I've, I've traded, I bought a bunch of shares in, I forget how many I put on Discord, of Vista, even though they just had earnings. So we're not going to get earnings out of them for another almost three months. But that's a trade that I kind of didn't talk about Monday. It's a little follow-up trade to that uh, recreational motorsports and outdoor summer uh, stimulus money slash I get a refund for my kids' camp money slash I'm not going on vacation money. So what am I going to do instead? Right. Stop. Pitch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and you, we need to figure out a way to spend all this money, right? We need to get out there. We need to re-stimulate the economy. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Hey, well, by the way, that, but if you've got kids, you you can't just sit inside. I mean, they will go insane. You've got to get them out doing something. By the way, my restaurant is booming right now. Like, I cannot even believe it. Like, don't get me wrong, we don't have the late night business that we used to get, which kills yeah. us like half our business. Um, but the other half, which is just eating. Like we had a line this weekend, a wait. Our weeknight business the last few nights is actually larger than we were before this whole virus thing. Like we're that's we're doing wild. More business, yeah. It's insane. Well, it's because people have been cooped up and they want to go out to eat, and you got to, You've got a place that uh, is kind of it's a neighborhood place and it's clean and it's going to be. It's going to be interesting, though. This weekend, Texas is now allowing bars to open. And so my bar is going to be opening at 25 percent capacity. A very I I don't I don't know how that's going to work because it's it's not a it's a dive bar. It's a small place. They're not allowing us to have bar stools at the actual bar. We're going to have to, like, serve people at seated at tables or something. It'll be very interesting to see how that goes. But if you're in Dallas, in Wood Tavern. Oh man! Hey, Chewy's earnings is today. So oh, is uh, Kevin Grass. I think I sold my Chewy's. Um, I'll have to double check. I think I'm out. But now I gotta now I gotta think about this. Do I want to trade Chewy's into earnings today? I don't know. I might because I feel like Chewy's has done so much better than all these other restaurants. But the stock kind of reflects that already. So I don't know. I'm, I'm undetermined. I'll put it in, if I come up with a decision today. I'll, I'll throw it in Discord uh, later, guys. Uh, so that's the vaccine trade guys. That's it. And by the way, this is not like we're going all in now. Uh, we would absolutely invite each of you guys to contribute to our thinking on this vaccine trade. If you see any, you know what, Dave, should we consider putting like, like a chat specific to, uh, vaccine news, and then a chat specific to hot spots or the v virus, and that yeah. way people can collectively, if you find some good data out there, right, or some information, you could put it in that chat section of the Discord. I think that'd be really beneficial. Do you want do you want two ch like two channels or just one, both news and? No, no, I'm thinking there are two. So, so one is related to the vaccine, right? Anything related to vaccine news. Mm -hmm. This is so important, right? It's so important that I think that in any way, if we can get some sort of an edge on there's some leaking, some 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 leaks coming out on this vaccine news or that vaccine news, positive or negative, right? It doesn't have to be positive. Because honestly, listen, if I see some negative stuff coming out, you're going to see me sell out of those vaccine trades quicker than you would ever imagine. Um, that that could be its own chat vaccine. Okay. There might be another one related to second wave, like second a second wave chat, like any indications of a hot spot or second wave of this thing hitting some area of the world, right? That, okay. Because that that's kind of unrelated to just investment in ideations and research. So there's so, there's now under the main chat section there's a vaccine news section, and then um, second wave actually already exists down in the everything else category, but I'm moving it up to the main chats just to give it a little bit more visibility uh, for the next, uh, you know, and, and we could, the kind of the things that we're actively talking about, we'll, we'll move to that main chats section and, and maybe even have just a kind of ongoing chat about things we talk about in the show. Um, if anyone wants to, by the way, 
I had one of uh, one of our viewers uh, send me a private message about kind of keeping a show notes section up to date. If anybody wants to volunteer to um, to take notes on what we talk about and log it in at and kind of a locked down read only channel that that I want to give some interns access to. If you want to be our one of our interns and and write down what we talk about, let me know. Send me a private message in uh, in Discord, and I'll uh, I'm going to try to get some people. So. Let's see. We have okay. Do, do. Yeah. So, I think it's really important. You know, I got to go in a minute here, so I got this graduation weird mobile graduation ceremony for my kids coming out of elementary school. But, um, listen, I just want to wrap it up saying this: this is not about hey, we got the stock picks for you for this week. I mean, this is about understanding what the marginal drivers of price are for this market the next ninety days. Yep. So we've identified what we think are two of the biggest. So now let's come together collectively as a community and try to, I don't want to use the word front run that information, right? But 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 try to early detect uh, anything that's related to those two marginal drivers of price. Let's do it collectively as a community and let's see if we can get an edge on the rest of the market because we at Dumb Money, we have a prepared mind. We know what we're looking for. We're actively looking for it 24 hours a day, and we know exactly what we're going to do if we find it, okay? Like, that's the goal here. That's the strategy. That's the move. That's the game plan. Um, so I, I thank you so much for joining the Discord, guys, and being part of this. Like, we are equal with you in this mission because we either win together or we lose together, right? Absolutely. <laughs> So, but before you go, please do hit the like button if you haven't already for the YouTube algorithm. If you have, just hit it twice so that it stays blue. That's what we really need. Be sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications. Do you podcast? Listen to our podcast. It's basically the same show, but without getting to see our uh, beautiful faces. We're also, uh, so oh, leave a review for us on Apple Podcasts. We're also on Spotify. We're on all of them, but uh, we're trying to get more reviews on Apple so that people can find our podcast. Yeah, we've talked about it a lot. The Discord server, um, I will tweet that invite code right now at Dave Hansen if you need one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am Dave Hansen for Chris and Jordan. We are Dumb Money. We will see you on Monday.